So I think startups are an excellent way of thinking about how do you build the city of the future. And the reason is, is because you have to think about what are the ways that you are uh, kind of creating a new a human ecosystem. Uh, how do you do talent management? How do you do innovation? How does technology play into this? And startups are the way that you think about this new future, these new set of possibilities, potential. Now, one of the things that's a little different from startups and existing companies or existing cities is you also have a bunch of stakeholders who aren't just new customers, but also it's a constant evolution. So the startup approach with innovation needs to be blended with the needs of citizenry who was already there. In October, I'll be launching a new book called Blitzscaling. And the reason I'm doing this is to try to help entrepreneurs around the world understand what some of the lessons from Silicon Valley are. But part of what makes Silicon Valley really work is speed to scale, where you essentially go to a global scale as part of your design from the very beginning, and you do it very fast. And Silicon Valley does this, China does this, and I think it's elements that can, this, this can happen in other cities. And you've got um, uh, Spotify in Stockholm, et cetera. So it does happen, but we want much more of it to happen because once you have a blitz scaling uh, scale up where your startup becomes a massive world changing industry, that helps its entire country, its, its region, and it brings products and services around the world. So one of the really key things to think about mistakes is how you learn from them. And you really only learn, you're, you're only learning at a fast enough pace if you're making mistakes. So my very first startup was called SocialNet. Uh, I made a classic entrepreneurial mistake for a software company, which was, I thought, oh, I have this brilliant idea and I'm gonna spend a lot of time developing it perfectly before going to market. In startups, especially in software startups, you want to get to market as fast as possible to see which of your ideas actually work with your customers and which you're actually mistaken about. And it's an emphasis of speed over perfection. So you want to get out with a minimum viable product and frequently the way that I kind of teach entrepreneurs, especially within the software arena, is to be embarrassed by your first product release. Mistake number two was as an investor, which is my friend Max Levchin came and pitched me this business called Slide which is like, oh, it's a photo sharing app that's gonna be so easy your grandmother could use it. And I was like, oh, that's never gonna work because it was downloaded as an application. Uh, and so I didn't invest. Whereas knowing that Max, who was a co-founder of PayPal, was just a talent, I should have invested in him. So the lesson was that sometimes an entrepreneur will pitch you on an idea that that idea actually doesn't make sense. And by the way, that idea didn't work. But the entrepreneur is so talented that you still wanna work with them. The third um, uh, thing I would say is kind of as a, as a, as a learning experience was the, uh, to make sure that you as an entrepreneur don't, and this is also related to my first startup, SocialNet, um, you wanna be constantly learning from everyone that you, that you can. And so uh, anyone that you're sitting down with, always ask them about your idea, but don't ask them a way, oh, do you like it? Ask them, what do you think is wrong with it? because as you're hearing it, you can then improve. And so using that experience, supposed to be like, oh, I have this precious idea and I'm not gonna talk to anyone about it, to actually go and talk to as many smart people as possible so you're constantly refining your idea. You know, entrepreneurship is hard. Uh, the metaphor I most often use for it is you jump off a cliff and you assemble an airplane on the way down. And part of the reason I use that metaphor is because that sense of vertigo, where you see the ground coming, is really scary and it's challenging. And so the key thing is the advice that I give entrepreneurs is to do not think of it as a purely solo mission. Try to build as much of a network as you can around you. It can be a network of finance, a network of advice, a network of customers, a network of talent, a network of other entrepreneurs uh, exchanging ideas and information about what's happening. Because when you do this, it increases the likelihood that you can figure out a way to actually, in fact, build that airplane or at least a parachute and get to other things that are kind of interesting. And so that advice may be the same advice that an entrepreneur 100 years ago should be given, but if anything, I think it's even more urgent in today where the landscapes of technologies and the landscapes of entrepreneurship is it evolving at a very fast clip. Great. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for sharing Thank you. with us. Yeah, pleasure.